Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. One church, one voice, making one sound, and that sound is victory. Thank you for our Zoom um, audience for zooming in, showing off your t-shirt, amen, repping your church. Listen, you can get in on that. Just click a picture, take a selfie, and put it in the comments. Show that you're repping, repping your church. You can put it in your YouTube, put it into um, your Facebook, however you are watching this. Check it out, put it in there, amen. Rep your church on T-shirt Sunday. Thank you. Deacon Bird for such a lovely testimony in our first spotlight, Zoom spotlight. You too can be a part of that by just clicking on the link when it comes out. Make sure you're signed up to receive our newsletter. Read the newsletter. <laughs> Amen. And check out our text. Make sure you sign up for all of that so we can be in touch with you and stay connected with you. Speaking of being connected, thank you. For connecting with us on today this sunday morning amen amen you have a multitude of choices right now to, to go through skim to uh, uh and, and five or six churches you can watch simultaneously it seems like now but thank you for stopping and watching i want you to i want to encourage you to tag and share um what's about to come up right now tag and share our live stream because we're about to get into the word we're jumping into the word of the Lord. And so come with me to Luke, to Luke, the gospel according to Luke, 18th chapter. And we're going to look at verses 18 through 23. Luke, the 18th chapter, verses 18 through 23. I'm always encouraged by our praise team. Bishop DL is doing such a wonderful job. Our musicians our singers, amen. Thank you, E. Pastor Aaron. If you haven't caught her, work the word Wednesday, sometimes on a Thursday. You can go there to our YouTube and our Facebook page and check that out. Thank you, amen. Our production um, manager here, Michelle, amen. Pitts for just doing what they do. Give it up for the team, y'all. Give it up for the team. Praise the Lord. We got a lot of folks working. I start calling names. It's going crazy. But thank you, Kevin, James, Kevin, uh, Veronica, uh, Kiki, Kara. Amen. Who else is back there? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Kamarion. Amen. Kamarion's working? Oh, wow. Okay. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Luke, the 18th chapter. Verse 18 through 23, it reads as thus, Now a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. You know the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. And he said, all these things I have kept from my youth. I'm a good church boy. I follow the commandments. I've kept all these things from my youth. In verse 22, so when Jesus heard these things, he said to him, you still lack one thing. Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me but when he heard this he became very sorrowful for he was very rich may the lord bless the readers and hearers of his word we hope that you honored the word with us on today by standing amen if you have if you have why don't you just text amen to that today we're going to speak uh, from the topic, the fight for first. The fight for first. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. You are our strength and our constant redeemer. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. Lord, it seems like it's been a year already. But it's just the day 31st. The 31st day in this new year, dear God. So, Lord, remind us that you are still with us and that we, you have a future and a plan for us that will prosper us. 
Dear God, thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and what you're about to do and what you're about to say. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. The fight for first. If you didn't know it by now, there is a battle going on. I'm not talking about the recent uh, insurrection or what's happening between red states and blue states, Democrats and Republicans, white versus black, and, or otherwise. I'm, I'm really talking about a battle that's more ancient than even these. And a battle for our mind, a battle for our soul, a battle that we constantly rage every day. It's because the enemy is trying to distract us from our purpose and prevent us from reaching our goal, our God-given destiny. It's the fight for first, every day. And for some, every moment is another round in this battle for first place. It's a wrestling match. Paul puts it this way, for we wrestle, not against flesh or blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yes, we are in an everyday struggle, and we are the prize. As to who, what will lay claim, who or what will lay claim to our lives and to our future. And this is why it's so key, so key that I've learned to have, Bishop, a vision for our lives. A vision, a vision. For, for, for a vision is a picture of what I am to become that will give me a reason to keep on fighting. We will fight for what we can see. For we will fight for what we can see. Habakkuk 2 and 2 puts it this way. It says, it says write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. In other words, for vision to be effective, for your vision to be effective, it must be simple, clear, instructional, and grounded. Simple, so that it may be readily understood. When I'm running, I should be able to see my vision, understand it, and keep on running. It got to be clear so that it can be readily shared. Share our, our vision. Our vision here at the church is to love, lead, serve, and give. And we don't do anything that goes against that vision of loving others, leading others, serving others, and giving generously so that we can help others. Instructional so that it can be readily applied to our lives and grounding so that we may really keep our focus and purpose when we are tempted to stray away from it. What, what is your vision? What is the picture that you see? Do you have one? While it may not feel like it, we are still at the top of a new year, and most folks during this time create vision boards. They have vision parties. Now, I know we're not doing that, but maybe you've done it over Zoom, you know, where you've modified or worked on your vision board. Y'all got one? Show a hand or two in the chat that if you have a vision board or you have something, you've done that. We do these things because of, because of not where we're at, but, but what we want to become, what we desire to be. We want to be able to see it before we see it. Uh, uh, so, so, so your vision is ultimately a picture of your future. Your vision, what you put together on your board, is ultimately a picture of your future, a picture of your health, a picture of your wealth, a picture of your relationships, a picture of your educational goals, a picture of your career aspirations, a picture of your spiritual life. Pictures are vital to attaining vision because vision, I'm going to say it again, 
is not effective until it is seen. You have to see your vision because you have no, cho cho no chance to win without seeing it. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. If I can't see myself in my future, then why should I be still live? Why should I keep going? Why should I tune in to hear what God is saying to his church? And when I say church, I mean you and I, not a building. For we are the called out ones, the ecclesia. Huh? I heard someone say, say this, while knowing who you are, knowing your identity is good, knowing who you are becoming is even better. Everybody says, I know who I am. I know who I am. I know whose I am. I know. But, but do you know what God's trying to make you be in the future? Do you know what you are becoming? Thank you, Michelle Obama. Uh, uh, she says, she says, she says I, I didn't know back then what I would become, but God will give you a glimpse, a glimpse as to who you shall be 5, 10, 20 years from now. And it is your job to paint your picture. Create your vision to what, to what you shall become. Only you know it. Don't expect everybody else to jump on board on what you are becoming because it's not their vision. And so, yes, people will question as to what you're, you are becoming. All they see is your present. But God said, I have given you the ability to envision your future, to see what you are becoming, chase after it, picture it. If you haven't done so already, if you haven't done so already this year, you need to work on your vision, work on your future picture of who you are becoming and then look at it, stare at it, meditate on it day and night. When you get up in the morning, look at that picture. Remind yourself of who of you, of, on, about who you are becoming. Remind yourself on who, on who God has called you to be and then start walking in it. That is the daily challenge. To, 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 to align our behavior to what we see. The more I see myself in my picture, on my board, the more it influences my actions and behaviors so that I can attain what I see. This is the process, get this, of alignment. I feel my professor hat coming on right now. The process of alignment to manifest in the natural what is seen in the spiritual. I have to align my thoughts with the thoughts of what I see. I have to align my talk with the talk of what I see. I have to align my habits with the habits of what I see. And it's through this process of alignment that makes anything possible. Please hear me when I tell you um, when you are aligned, when, you, when your actions are aligned with what you see, you can achieve your dreams. Yes, when your actions are aligned with what you see, you can fulfill your goals. When your actions are aligned with what you see, you then will start to establish legacy and prosperity. Provision will come to the vision. It will attract the money. It will attract 
the resources. It will attract the relationships needed for you to accomplish and, and create and fulfill what you see in your picture of you becoming. And what you're becoming, alignment then brings about balance. It keeps us focused on keeping first things first. Whenever you feel like your life is disjointed, it's because and the balancing, you're imbalanced and you're out of order. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's where this disjunction comes into. I just made up a word. I thought when, when, when things are not fitting right, when you feel out of sorts uh, in your life, you're, it's, you're disjointed. You're not aligned because, because you are out of order. You're not keeping first things first. Something isn't lining up right. If you want to know why trouble is in your face, something isn't lining up right. If you want to know why your money is funny, your change is strange, something isn't lining up right. You want to know why, why you feel sickness in your body? It's because something isn't lining up right. So alignment is crucial for your success both naturally and both spiritually. For the Bible tells us that being aligned is important to God. Alignment is important to God. God, because he wants you to be successful in every aspect, hear me, of your life. We have to stop talking about the sweet by and by and over yonder. God said, I need somebody to be successful down here and be ambassadors to be a commercial of what a Christian, of what a believer can really be like, can walk like, can live, can live like, uh, can do whatever they say. And, uh, he, needs, he needs a showpiece. And I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm willing to be God's showpiece. Huh, you, you're wondering what I'm talking about. Go to Jeremiah 29 and 11. Let me help you. Jeremiah 29 and 11. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you a hope. You're pushing me. Thank you. Uh, and a future. I'll go with you too, but I'm, not, I'm just getting started. I'm just getting rolled up. Third John 1 and 2. It says, says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Look at this now. Alignment. Alignment. When I prosper, in order for me to prosper, in order to be successful, in order for my spirit to prosper and everything else to prosper in my life, God said, there's, you have to have an alignment. An alignment. An alignment. Soul prosperity leads to prosperity in every area of your life. So when my spirit is successful. <laughs> when my spirit is aligned with God, with God. Yes, when my spirit is in alignment with his thoughts, when my, when my, then, then my habits start to align with what he says, with my spirit, with his spirit, then guess what? Then, then I start to manifest what spirit says to manifest. Oh, my goodness. I, I need to help. So, so this is what I'm trying to get to here. Because I believe, I, 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 well, Bishop, this is what I'm believing. In 2021, that, that, that prosperity, that, 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 <laughs> that 2020 was a setup, Doc. Yes, sir. It was a setup for us to be able to receive 
what God was holding back in, in 2020, in 2021. So all the money, all the health, all, all the resources that we thought we lost in 2020, God said that when we come back into alignment, I'm speaking a word right here, God's going to prosper every area of your life. Who receives that on today? Who receives that on today? Uh, but here's the catch. You got to get in alignment. You have to understand that you have to keep on fighting uh, to make first things first in your life. No, no, by, no, no place in the Bible puts this more, more clearly than Matthew, the sixth chapter and the 33rd verse. If you go there, you will see these words. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Now, what's the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is his way of doing things. His way. King's kingdom, kingdom describes sovereignty. <laughs> Kingdom describes territory. Kingdom refers to dominion. Well, I have dominion over. And God is saying, when you seek first my will, you seek first territory that I have, if you seek first whatever comes under my dominion, then guess what? And he says, seek that and my righteousness. All these things shall be added unto you, my God. Huh? So principle here, if I am to, see, to succeed and prosper in every area of my life, I need to keep God first in all that I do. I got to keep him first in everything. Watch this. Everything that I do. Well, well, now you sound, start to sound like a prosperity preacher. I don't care what I sound like. This is the word of God. And you, you trying to figure out if, if $600, which is a joke, six, you trying to look for your $600, God said, I will give you that and more if you just come in alignment with me. Right here is your own stimulus package. Oh, I'm here to help somebody. I'm here to help somebody. See, see, we often overlook the power of the scripture because we interpret this as a limiting scripture rather than an empowering scripture. Uh, we interpret seeking God first for what we can't do. Instead of what we can do, we interpret it on, as to what we can't accomplish instead of what God is saying we can accomplish in our lives. And I came here to straighten up the matter. I came today to straighten up the matter and to tell you that you need to take out what my wife calls that stinky thinking and you need to go ahead and embrace what God has, the truth of what God has for you. The devil is alive when you seek God first and his way of doing things. When you seek to live truly in his kingdom, when you seek to be an ambassador of Christ, putting him first in all that he does and his righteousness, God said that I will add unto you. He clarifies this in the chapters preceding, in the, in the verses preceding 33, Matthew 6, 33. You, I don't have time to read it, but it talks about worry. It talks about worry. And how many of you can tell the truth and shame the devil that 2020 and the month of January has been a month and a year of worry? Of worry. You all have had some type of worry in our lives. Uh, uh, worry about, Lord have mercy, is Trump going to win Jesus Christ? Have, oh God, is this 
fool gonna still be, I said it, I, I'm sorry. It's gonna stay in the office. Don't tell me you weren't worried. We worry about that. We was worried, we worried about stimulus checks. We worried about our kids getting educated. We're worried about them playing sports. We're worried about the coronavirus. Mass, no mass, double mass. How long, how long the vaccination will it come? Can I qualify? Do I want to take it? I'm worried. The Bible says, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry over what the Gentiles think. Don't worry about over what life is throwing at you. If God takes care of the flowers in the fields, yes, won't he take care of you? If God can, can take care of the birds in the air, won't he take care of you? And if you just think about how he has taken care of you up to now, don't you think he will still take care of you? Therefore, don't worry, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he says, and everything that you are worrying about, everything that you are looking for shall be added <laughs> unto you. But I lost in 2020. I hear what you're saying. I lost. I lost my health. I lost this. I lost some people. God said, God said, what that is, is a form of calculus. Because the only reason that I take things away is so that I can make room. <laughs> so I can add more unto you. Oh, we don't want to hear that, but that's, that's the nature of pruning. Oof, shut up. It's the nature of pruning. There's sometimes you got to lose in order to win. My God. My God. And so, 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 so here's God saying, you can have what you need and what you want if you put him first. Keep on fighting for him to be first in your life. And the Lord will reveal himself to you on how, the, how he's going to add things to you. He'll direct your paths to the people that you need to be, to, to help create the vision uh, that, you, that you see. I don't know how I'm going to be this and accomplish this. I, I don't have the money for all of that. God says, seek me first. All right. and, and as you seek... I will send, oh goodness, as you seek, I will send. What you're going to send, God? I'm going to send the resources. I'm going to send the relationships. I'm going to send the people. I'm going to send the connections. I'm going to send everything that you need in order for you to realize what you see. What you see. I'm here to let you know. That God is not scared to bless you. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, well, God is not scared to bless you. Uh, but but well, what are you talking about? Some of y'all, some of y'all uh, are thinking, well, he did this here. He he made he made this to happen before. Uh, will he do it again? Why not? Why not? In fact, he will not just do it again, but he will do it better. Oh my God. Somebody go ahead for the first time and, and on your screen I want you to type out and text somebody and say God is about to bless me better in 2021. God is about to bless me better this year. Uh, uh, he's not just going to recycle old blessings but he said he's going to heap upon me a blessing uh, that I won't have room enough to receive. 
God, God's not scared of you going higher in him. He's not scared of you uh, going to another platform. He's not scared of you. He's not trying to limit you, limit your, your, your voice, limit your, your, your character, not your character, limit, limit your reach. He's not trying to do that. He said, I need to bless you. I'm looking for somebody to bless. God's looking for somebody to bless because, because he needs a boss down here. <laughs> he needs somebody that, that can handle some stuff. He needs some folks that be able to, 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 to move some things. He needs people to help conquer more mountains. More mountains down here. So this text is not a limiting text, but one of empowerment. And, it, and, it's, and it's about priority. If you just make God a priority in your life, you shall get what you're looking for. Oh, my God. You should get what you're looking for. This is what the rich young ruler did not understand. Uh, because this is where in this text we see Matthew 6, 33 uh, uh, come to life. Come to life. The rich young man, he comes up to Jesus seeking. He sees something. He sees something in his vision board. He sees something of what he believes he wants to become. And he chases after Christ and says, I want to, I want to know what do I need to do to become what I see. Huh? What do I need to do to become what I see? How do, well, he says, what well, must I do to, eternal, to, to, to receive eternal life? Eternal life. He, at that time, understand, we understand what eternal life means right here. But people, they did not really understand that. And so he was trying to figure out, how can I be down with you, Jesus? Huh? Because I, there's some things in my life I need to accomplish, I want to accomplish. Huh? And, and I want to make sure that that. I accomplish it. I want to be able to attain what I see. So Jesus calls the roll. He says, all right, all right, son, this is what you want to do, all right? Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. He lists out the Ten Commandments. Honor your, honor your mother and your father. And, 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 the, and the young man says, yes, I've done all of that. I've done those things. I've kept them from my youth. I'm a good church boy, but that's not enough. That's my sin. This is now. There got to be something that this is leading to. And Jesus answers the young man, all right, but still lack one thing. He, and he says, here's the challenge. Sell all you have and distribute to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Come and follow me. And so here it is. Here it is. Many interpret the scripture as God rallying against riches. Because the young man, he couldn't, he couldn't do it. He's like, he says immediately, before, he, I don't know how long he thought about it, but it says immediately, the young man goes away sorrowful. And it says because he was rich. Because he was rich. However, this is not going against being rich. God is saying, God, you got to get this. You have to get this. Because God does not mind you having things. He minds things having you. Remember, whenever, sometimes you got to lose in order to win. Huh? And so if he took away the thing that held him bound... Then he will win what he was looking for, what he was desiring to achieve. Now, the problem here that God ruled out immediately, that Jesus ruled out immediately with the young rich man, was the problem of hidden idols. The problem of hidden idols. And he, in this, in this example, his money was a hidden idol. Something that, that he couldn't give up. Uh, and this refers not only to money, but it refers to our status, our position, 
our power, hear me, our goals, our dreams, hear me, our, our, how smart we are, how pretty we are, hear me, the accolades we get from people, hear me, huh? hidden idols that stop us, that we wrestle with, that we don't want to, that we don't want to admit that we have, that we, we're so good in every other place in our lives, we think it may cancel that one thing out, that hidden idol. What is that hidden idol of yours that you won't cancel out, that you can't seem to give up? This is where you wrestle every day, every moment with that hidden idol, that hidden idol. Could it be the reason why you haven't received that blessing? Why it seems like you're stuck in, in a rut right now. You can't make it over the hump because, because of that hidden idol, that thing that you can't give up, that thing that you just got to hold on to, that thing that makes you think that makes you you, hidden idol. Sometimes it's not even the thing. It's a desire for a thing. <laughs> a desire for a thing that stops us from putting God first in our lives because we want that thing so badly that we will neglect him for the thing. We want to be known and popular and have a platform and, and riches and, and whatever it is. We want it, 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 we want it. Not realizing we have been allowed that to become our golden calf. Allow that to be um, that thing that stops us from really getting what God desires for us. And so we won't give our time. We won't give our treasure, our tithes, our offering. We won't give. We won't love. We won't lead. We won't serve because I'm chasing after the thing. The thing, that thing, that hidden, not so hidden idol, hoping that if I chase hard enough, if I go after it hard enough, and if I'm good at 99% of everything else, oh, but, but if I, what God said, I got that. What I need is what you're not willing to give. It got quiet on internet land. <laughs> it's quiet in God's church because we're, we're looking at that one thing that God, that, that we desire to have so badly that we're willing to put it before God. To put it before God. And what we know what to do is right. What we know how clear it is. We're putting it before giving. We're putting it before our gener generosity, not just in our tithes and offering. But we put it before our being generous with other people. We put it before what God has told us what to do. What is your hidden idol? Are you in love with the gift more than with the giver? This is the question. This is the fight. And the only way to break a hidden idol is to sacrifice it. That's why Jesus tells the rich young ruler, give away all you, sell all you what you got. Sell it. And then come follow me. Give it away. See, they give it away or sell it. He said one of those, he says, Whatever you do, get rid of it. Move it out the way. And, and, and because you have to sacrifice that thing in order to really receive what I have in store for you. What in 2021 
is the thing that you need to sacrifice. What do you need to sacrifice in order to truly place God in your life? Bishop, from this point on in the scripture, at least in my, in my study, I don't see nothing else about God, about the rich young ruler. We have no idea what happens to him. We just know that he went away. We don't know what happened to him. We don't know what, what occurs. We don't know if he got married. We don't know if, if he stayed rich. We don't know what happened to him. All we know is that he disappeared. The Bible says nothing else. There is no mention about the rich young ruler after this story. We don't know what happened in his life. But what we do know is that he could not give up his idol. He lost his fight. He couldn't put God first. And there are so many things that are trying to snatch our focus away from God's plan for our lives. Fighting for top priority in our hearts and in our minds. Causing us to worry on how to attain temporal things rather than on the things eternal. Today, I caution you, don't lose the fight. Don't lose the will to keep on fighting because I don't want you to disappear in 2021. God wants you to show up in 2021. But in order for you to keep showing up, you got to keep on fighting. You got to understand, watch this, it's worth the fight. Uh, it's worth the fight. It's worth, worth the fight to keep God first in your heart. It's worth the fight to keep God first in your mind. It's worth the fight to keep God first in your relationships, in your money, in your giving, in your living. Putting God first in your life will help you stop worrying about your life. I've, I've learned now. I've had to learn. I ain't come, out, come at it easy, but I had to learn. There are some things that's in my control, but there's a whole lot of other stuff not in my control. And for that right there, I need God to handle it. Because if he don't handle it, it cannot be done. And so and so, there's some things that I control. I control, I control, I do what I can do, and I make sure I keep the clear, the past clear, to make sure that God has license to operate as he should and can in my life. And how do I give, give him license? By keeping him first. By keeping him first in my mind. Keeping him first in my body. By keeping him first. Uh, pursuing God. Seeking God. Keeping him first in my money. Keeping him first in my giving. And all I'm saying is that it's worth the fight. If you seek ye first. The kingdom of God. You got to wake him back up. Come on, Bishop. And his righteousness. Yes. And all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew is saying that when you place God first, he's saying that all these things, everything that you're looking for, everything that you desire, it shall be added unto you there is a blessing to fight it and the blessing is all of these things shall be added unto you but you got to in order for you to get there you got to give God first place you got to give God first place in your mind you got to give God first place in your, your body. You got to give God the first place in your thoughts. And you got to give God first place in your giving. And the Lord said, when you put me in first place, all these things, everything that you are concerned about, 
you don't have to worry about it anymore but because because God said I will supply all of your needs and I will give you the desires of your heart I need somebody out there that understands that when you put God first I need somebody here that can testify that when I put God first and sacrifice my idol God did what he said he would do what did he say he said he will make me the head and not the tail he said you'll make me above and not beneath he said he will beg me an overcomer and i'm here to let you know that i am an overcomer is there anybody out there on youtube is there anybody and Facebook land, is there anybody that can shout, I am? You can shout it, well yes you can, shout I am, an overcomer, I'm an overcomer, I overcame 2020, I overcame depression, I overcame suicide, I overcame I'm a, 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 not a sibling's practice. I overcame having to make my home um, a school, a job, a house, entertainment. I overcame the storms that came into our lives. I am overcome. Why? Because I kept putting God first in everything I did. And he, I said he, he did just what he said. What I'm trying to tell you is to keep God first in everything. And when you keep God first, it shall, it shall, it shall, it shall be added, added to you. He's about to add to your happiness. He's going to add to your joy. He's going to add to your love. He's going to add to your health. He's going to add to your money. He's going to give you a promotion from the north, from the south, east and west. Blessings upon blessings. Blessings upon blessings. Blessings upon blessings. Favor upon favor. Because all these things, all these things, all these things shall be added, shall be added, I can shall be added unto you. And here's the thing that I love about the Lord is that He will surprise you. He will add and then multiply. He will add and then multiply. Come here, boy, with the five loaves, two fish. And he said, God, when you gave it to him, what did he do? The little boy said, when I gave it to Jesus, I gave it to him. What did he do? Did he add unto you? Well, he added unto me, but he also multiplied. He multiplied, multiplied the five loaves, multiplied the two fishes multiplied it until I had leftovers after feeding 5,000 men and boys and girls he gave me overflow I don't know about you but God's about to give us overflow in 2021 I need somebody here to proclaim and claim your overflow I'm gonna get my overflow I'm going to get what God promised me I'm going to get the blessings upon blessings the blessings upon blessings that he promised me because I'm going to keep on fighting to keep God first in my life
I need to I need to qualify. I need to clarify something because because many of you are, are looking here in the scripture and you're thinking first means perfect. No, first don't mean perfect. If it did, none of us would be blessed. So let me clarify that. But first refers to intention. I'm going to do everything I can to keep God first. And because we live in a dispensation of grace, hear me. The reason why you are hearing this sermon is because God is, is extending grace unto you so that you can get back on track. Who's ready to get back on track? Somebody on the screen is type, I'm ready to get back on track, Pastor. I'm ready to get back on track and giving God first place in my life. Some of you have been worried about this money. You've been worried about this money. Concerned about $600. Will it be $2,000? Will it be just one time? Will it just be... Will it, will it happen? Is it in the mail? Do I qualify? Listen, God has presented to you your own stimulus package. He said, this is a faith thing. If you just go ahead and give it to me. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If you've been holding on to that money as an idol, the reason why the rich young ruler is so pertinent, so relatable, because for many of us, rich or poor, money is an idol. And we believe that if we give it to God, he won't come through. But, 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 did he come through? Did he work it out? Did he make a way? You're alive right now because God has come through. So why do you think that he will stop? Because God has not left his throne. He still rules it all. So today I dare you, in whatever area that you need to do, I want you to create an altar right now. However you are, however you are looking on Zoom or YouTube or Facebook, stop what you're doing, create an altar and ask God for forgiveness. And say, Lord, I'm going to keep you first. I'm sacrificing my idol. My God, I'm sacrificing my idol. I'm sacrificing the thing that I'm scared to give up. The thing that seems so precious unto me. To you, oh God. I'm going to give it to you. I'm giving you my ego. I'm giving you my pride. I'm giving you my lust. I'm giving it to you. My attractions. I'm giving it to you, God. I'm giving it to you. For you to do what you will. Because I know when I put it in your hands, like you've done with that, that little boy. That little boy's lunch. When I give it to you, you would not just add, but you will multiply it. You will multiply. You will know what to do. For some of you, for many of us, it's our money that we struggle. We struggle so hard. We don't want to give that. But a clenched fist leaves no room to receive. Today, I want to challenge you to unclench your fists in your giving. How are you looking? How are you streaming? How are you are watching this right now? Go give an extra seed. Whatever it is that you need to do, give it now. Give your tithes. Give your offering. Give a hundred dollar seed. Whatever it is that you need to do, give it unto God and watch Him work. Watch Him move. However you need to give, do it now. Work it out. 
do it quickly release your idol sacrifice your idol and watch God work in your life and I guarantee when you do it it all shall be added it all shall be added unto you and today right now I proclaim that everybody that, that moves under the sound of my voice that does not switch the channel does not scroll our past that you will receive a harvest of blessings that you will have room enough to receive I declare and I decree that when you do this it shall be added unto you your dreams shall come forth the prosperity is going to happen in your life it shall happen the business shall flourish it's going to occur your child and your relationship will come back together it shall happen it shall come forth somebody shout hallelujah Lord, i'm available to you i'm available to you god oh 